attack is intimidation. Their attitude, just win, baby. History reveals that the Raiders have made Super Bowl appearances in each of the last three decades. They now seek a record fourth in the 90s. But recently, the silver has tarnished and the black grayed as injuries and key mistakes have kept this club from the playoffs four of the last five years. The Raiders are now in an ardent dash for the AFC West crown, but this tenacious race will not be served by youth. No, these Raiders must be led by aging but proud warriors, veterans of championships gone by, who must now step to the forefront and blaze a trail through the playoff stretch run, a trail that begins today in Cincinnati. NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Los Angeles Raiders versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Riverfront Stadium. The standings in the AFC West. Denver on top, the Raiders and Kansas City tied for second, and they're just a game behind. Part of the story here today will be the weather. It is cold. It is windy. We've had some snow flurries. It could really drop before the game is open. Hello, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones, along with Todd Christensen. And the Raiders now have a chance to make a run at the playoffs. And that's what they need to do. And as you mentioned in the tease, it's going to be done by older players. 20 players on this team, 30 years of age or older. Art Shell prefers that veteran leadership. A number of people on this team who possess Super Bowl rings. And that is a prerequisite to success in this playoff run. The Cincinnati Bengals have won the toss. They will be receiving. And that means, of course, that Jeff Jager will be kicking off for the Raiders. Mike Dingo and Shane Garrett are the return men for Cincinnati. And it is Shane Garrett from the goal line. He is out to the 10, the 15, and will be stopped at about the 18-yard line as Napoleon McCallum was down. Cincinnati's offense. Their offensive line, it is very thin due to injuries. They have to stay healthy today. Backs and receivers. They are starting the rookie quarterback, Don Holland. And listen to this. They have a cat set. Both running backs come out. A second quarterback and a tight end come in. This set is two quarterbacks, two tight ends, and two wide receivers. First start for the rookie, Don Hollis, taken in the fourth round of the draft, played his collegiate ball at right. Opens with a play action fake, comes over the middle, passes complete to Brooks. And Brooks is out to the 28-yard line, close to the first down. James Brooks, I tell you what, James Brooks has just done something monumental. James Brooks has just gone past Franco Harris, fourth on the all-time list of yards from scrimmage. Now, an interesting point about this, Charlie, is this is not somebody you think of when you think of Hall of Fame players, but it's unbelievable. Over 14,000 yards from scrimmage, and we'll get the graphic up for you in just a bit. And it is a first down. Hollis sets, fires, and this one is incomplete. And what Todd was talking about, all-purpose yardage for James Brooks, and this is what he has done. And notice the names that surround it. It's amazing to me because you look at that, and I think it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to say that Tony Dorsett is going to make it into the Hall of Fame. Look at those names. Peyton, Brown, Harris, Simpson. And James Brooks has had an outstanding career, both with San Diego and Cincinnati. When you look at those numbers, I don't know if numbers lie or not, but that man right there has had an outstanding career putting the yards up. Second down and ten. about five yards. It'll be third down and five. Winston Moss made the tackle. Raiders defense led by their front safe, by, by the front seven. Raiders defense is ranked second in the AFC. A look at their secondary with the McDaniel, Washington, Lott, and Anderson defensively. They will go to the bandit. Two linebackers come out. Gary Lewis and Torn Doran come in. Third down and five. Sam Weiss talked about the fact that Hollis has terrific mobility. This would be a good opportunity for him to utilize that here at 35. And, of course, the reason that Hollis is starting is the fact that Boomer Sison has a squished little finger in his left hand. That's his throwing hand. Pass is complete to Mike Barber. First down. 
Eddie Anderson with the tackle. He looks like he's in junior high school, doesn't he? I tell you what, he does look young, but one of the more popular routes now on third down is called the swirl route. Number 86 comes in and out in between the two. And Hollis right there is looking right at Mike Barber, who's in for the injured Eddie Brown. Cuts outside, there's nobody there. First down for the Bengals. The kid's looking good early. Little something about Don Hollis, 6'3", 215 pounds. He was a triple major at Rice Poly Sci. Uh, managerial studies in human performance. Ah, but did he graduate? Yes, he did. Really? Yes. That is impressive. Thank you, boy. Across the 50 in the Raider territory to the Los Angeles 47 yard line. Charlie, another thing impressive about him is that Sam Weiss told us that he's a legit 4640 guy. And what that means is you've got somebody that can scramble, and that's one of the things that just drives the defense crazy. You saw Icky Woods right there. Never quite coming back fully from that knee surgery that he had in 1989. You can see right there by his season totals that he has really struggled. But in his first two carries, he's looked pretty good. Second down. Don Hollis, the young rookie quarterback, turned 24 two days ago. His mom and dad are here in the stands for the game. If he was for the first down. So three first downs on this drive for Cincinnati that started their own 18. Well, Icky Woods, as we mentioned here, you can see in 1988 his Pro Bowl season, five yards to carry 15 touchdowns. And, of course, that was the year the Bengals went to the Super Bowl. Then in the next season against the Pittsburgh Steelers, he tore up his knee, and as you can see by the graphic there, he is absolutely not the same player. First down, the ball at the Raider 42-yard line. And we have jumping as Rodney Holman. No, that's understandable. Rodney's a little bit rusty. He didn't start. He didn't start last week as a result of a leg injury. He's a little bit excited, wants to get off. I think it was a pass. <laughs> And I have a feeling he was a primary receiver. <laughs> Let me tell you something, boy. When you're a tight end, you know that ball's coming to you. You want to get off quick. So it's first and 15. The ball at the 47-yard line. Opening drive of the ball game. No score. Cincinnati has run over four minutes off of the clock here in the first quarter. Pass is dropped by James Brooks. Little swing out to the left side, so it'll be second down and 15. Again, Hollis did a nice job there. He read the inside blitz. Both inside backers for the Raiders came, and he had the flare control. He had Brooks out in the flat, but he wasn't able to come up with it. James Brooks, as we mentioned, now with the record-setting fourth place on the all-time list of yards from scrimmage, just flat-out drops that one. Another note on Don Hollis, his first two uh, seasons at Rice as a freshman, as a sophomore, he was a defensive safety and was second in the all Southwest Conference uh, rankings to uh, Steve Atwater of the University of Arkansas, who's played so well at Denver. Second and 15. And it is intercepted by Ronnie Locke. And Lott returns it to the 44-yard line of Cincinnati. Well, here we are singing the praises of the young quarterback. But then again, there's, not, there's a lot to be said for veteran savvy. Now take a look at where are Hollis's eyes. He's looking right in the middle, and Ronnie Lott is reading his eyes. He never once looks to the side, and Ronnie Lott is able to make that pick, which is his 56th of his career, which leaves him... 12th on the all-time list. He is the leading active interceptor in the National Football League, as you can see right there, ahead of Everson Walls and Duran Cherry. Talking to defensive coordinator Dave Adolph yesterday, he said that he has lent more than just his skill to this team. He has really established leadership in the Raiders' secondary. First down at the Bengal 44-yard line. Raider back to throw. He drops it off underneath the coverage to Roger Craig. We'll look now at that Raiders offense and a look at their offensive line with Wilkerson, Wisniewski, Mospar, Montoya, and Wright. Backs and receivers. So Roger Craig, of course, as you can tell, is starting at the running back, but we do expect to see a lot of Marcus Allen. Offensively, they'll go to the Bear. The fullback comes out, and Tim Brown comes in. at the 35-yard line of Cincinnati. And here is 
Steve Smith for the first down. As he has five yards to the 30-yard line. Defensively for Cincinnati, their front seven only 10 sacks fewest in the NFL. They're going to have to put some pressure on Schrader today. And a look at their secondary, Haddox, Thompson, Fulcher, and Bussey. Defensively, they go to the nickel. Two linebackers come out, Lewis Phillips and Ricky Dixon come in. First and 10 just inside the Cincinnati 30-yard line. The call again. And they will mark him to the 22 yard line. That's a gain of eight. It'll be second down and a couple. Alfred Williams, the rookie out of Colorado, led the defense. Years ago, the NFC Central was known as the Black and Blue Division, but I think it's applicable where the AFC West is concerned. On the interior there, you can see Don Mosbar, Steve Wisniewski, and Max Montoya, all Pro Bowl players creating a big gap for Steve Young. You know, teams like San Diego, Kansas City, and the Raiders now are playing smash mouth football. And you can see right there, when you have a 240 pound fullback behind those pro bowlers up front, the Raiders too are of a smash mouth mentality. So as now Steve Smith and Napoleon, Mc uh, Napoleon McCallum, who are the running backs, and it is McCallum who gets the call. And they will mark his progress to the 13 yard line. One, stop first down. Five, one thing Cincinnati five, didn't want to do is they didn't want to get their front seven beat up, but check out the right side of the line. Max Montoya, the former Bengal, pulling out, cutting inside, and Napoleon McCallum, who last week had his first touchdown in five years, shows that naval duty has not affected his ability to pick the right hole. What a nice guy he is, too, by the way, Napoleon McCallum. Terrific dude. I really like him. First down, 13-yard line. Raider comes back to this side. This is Fernandez, and he is dropped at the seven. It'll be second down and four. Thomas with the tackle, and now let's check in with our NBC 10-minute checker. Kansas City, Cleveland, Dallas, Washington, Buffalo, New England, all no scores there. The only score, the Giants out in front of Tampa Bay, 7 nothing. Here, we have no score, but uh, Detroit, Minnesota, Indianapolis, Green Bay also no score. And here it is, Raiders nothing and Bengals nothing. Seven and a half minutes to go, first quarter. And Los Angeles is ready. And here is McCallum. And he is going to get a yard, and that's going to be on. The market to the six. So it'll be third down and three for the first down. Alonzo Mitz and James Francis on the stop for Cincinnati. Barney Bussey came up to pretty put a pretty good hit there on McCallum as well. Napoleon McCallum, you may remember him from his Navy days, and of course with the Raiders, he had a special dispensation enabling him to get to play in the National Football League, but speed is not his strong suit. Cutting to the outside was not a good decision, and now the Raiders are with their passing group here at third and four. Dalton Fernandez and Tim Brown. Sam Grady, that ankle is bothering him. He is inactive today becomes the fourth wide receiver when they go to that set. Craig gets the call. They'll mark it at the one yard line. It'll be first and goal to go. It's Marcus Allen it there, Marcus. Charlie. It, it is. Marcus for, has come in for it. Comes in for one play. You know what? I like what Terry Rubisky has done this drive. Offensive coordinator for the L.A. Raiders. Terrific call. They come in with their nickel down. Nice block there by Mosbar, putting the nose guard David Grant off to the side. Marcus almost punches it in for the touchdown. Can we take another quick look at that? I love the moves that Marcus makes. You know, he is he makes something out of nothing and he always, he does it constantly as you see here when he starts there's nothing there oh okay then i'll go over here well nothing. and he sees it so well but don mosbar did an outstanding yeah. job of pushing grant to the side giving him that yeah. big hole we got a couple of excellent 30 plus running backs here today and steve smith scores a touchdown So the Raiders move on top with 549, time remaining in the first quarter. Well, the Raider offensive line really established some dominance here. Look at coming off the ball, Wisniewski right, the tight end. They bury themselves. There's nobody left. You can see right there the tight end. Glover comes down on Francis, enabling a big hole for Smith, who practically walks in for the six. So after the interception by Ronnie Lott, the Raiders move 44 yards in eight plays. They then add the extra point, and they move on top by a score of seven to nothing. We'll be back with the kickoff in a moment. 
This is Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen, Ronnie Lott. That's Run Run Jones, no relation. Uh, Ron, <laughs> we talked about in the uh, we talked about in the tease. Twins. We talked about in the tease. The uh, it's going to be the veterans such as Ronnie Lott that will lead the Raiders to the playoffs should they make it. Well, that's exactly right. So far, so good. Shane Garrett again on the kickoff return, and this time he is brought down at the 14-yard line. And it is Kudup who got him. And we have a, some pushing and shoving back of the 30. We'll step aside for a moment and be back. Welcome back to Riverfront Stadium. It was 540 time remaining first quarter. The Raiders on top seven to nothing. And Cincinnati has the ball at their own 14 yard line. One of the tight ends, Hollis, a sprint to the right side, he gets around the corner, and he scoots out of bounds, maybe a yard, uh, that's going to be about it. Townsend was chasing him. Let's go back to the kickoff. You want to know what the life of a special team bomber is like? Take a look at Elvis Patterson. He's made a number of plays, and so he is a marked man. We're going to double team you with David Grant and Eric Adams. Look at the takedown here. Two points, David Grant, bang, and then he falls on top of it. Patterson doesn't appreciate it. And so he goes after him. Now watch this. How tough can this guy be if the kicker can pull him off? <laughs> they marked Hollis out at the 12-yard line. So it goes for a loss of two, and it is second down and 12. And here is Brooks. Starts right, comes left, comes back right. And he's out close to the 20-yard line. He'll pick up eight. It'll be third down and four. Tom Benson makes the stop for the Raiders. James Brooks will be 33 years of age in November, and he, one of the things that he takes great pride in is his conditioning. We mentioned, of course, the 14,000 yards that he did earlier, but a lot of that has been through kick returns, which is impressive. Here's a man who led, not only made it to the Pro Bowl as a kick returner, but also made it as a running back, the only running back in Bengal history to have 2,000-yard seasons. Third down and four. Four wide receivers on this set. Brooks is back with Hollis. And he is spun down. There is no flag. They may let him get away with the, uh, in reality, intentional grounding. Anthony Smith had a just full of jersey. Well, of course, the people are, you know, fans now are concerned about this in the grasp rule, but the idea now is if he is in imminent danger, you can see Smith has him right there. Hollis spins away, but there's nobody else coming until at the last minute you can see right there. Winston Moss does come, so maybe yes, that should have been an in the grasp. Who knows? I, I, but you know how I feel about that. They should punt the rule anyway. I'm glad they didn't call it. And now they really will punt. Lee Johnson will be kicking. And Tim Brown can give the Raiders excellent field position. High and short. The Raiders will stay away from it. And it will be down around the Los Angeles 46-yard line. We've got a timeout. Raiders have the lead back in a moment. Welcome back to Riverfront Stadium. Here's a reminder that at the conclusion of today's game, We'll be, we'll be presenting the Avis We Try Harder Award, which will be given to the game's most valuable player. You notice Schrader here with the hood on. In case you just join us, the temperature is just about 30. We expect wind in the 25 to 30 mile an hour range. That means the wind chill factor is going to drop around five degrees before this game is over. And that wind is whipping around down on the field. Raiders with a 7-0 lead and the ball at their own 46-yard line first down, dominating the offense, uh, dominating the defense by a running offense, such as you see here by Roger Craig. Well, this is the very thing that Cincinnati didn't want to happen, but this is what the Raiders have established. Watch the left side of the line. Take a look at Wilkerson coming off on Grant. Double team there. This is known as the 17 Bob Treo. And there's Roger Craig following behind the double team block of the left tackle Wilkerson and Galt to enable them to get seven yards. Second down and three. Why throw if you can run this effectively? And especially on a day like this, as you mentioned, the weather. Inclement conditions. Smith, who scored the touchdown, picks up the first down. Seven yards to the 40-yard line. And, of course, when you think of recent Raider running backs, you think of Bo Jackson, and we'll flash back to January the 13th, this year in the Coliseum. Well, he cuts to the outside, and there he cuts up field. 
there right here at the end you can see watch the leg a little bit extended that's what happened right there that is what precipitated the end of his football career now you're looking at a man who is going to be a full-time baseball player you made that announcement this week and just it just it looked like an ordinary tackle though and now we have contact prior to the ball being snapped as david grant but Charlie, moved across may have been drawn as i say charlie i've seen the replay a number of times and you can see that he's overextended and you can see where the pressure that happened on that hip joint and it really is unfortunate because I, I think one of the real novelties of sports here in america was the fact that you had this fantastic athlete that could perform at the level i mean when is the next time you're going to have somebody who plays in an all-star game and a pro bowl you're right maybe not in our lifetime the call was on bruce uh, bruce wilkerson on a false start the ball goes back to the cincinnati 45 yard line and it's first and 15 for the raiders and we may see them throwing here uh, stay on the ground again to the 36 yard line he picks up nine saw earlier the sign Bo owns Cincinnati during his career two of his longest runs a 92 yarder and an 89 yarder were against Cincinnati and as I mentioned the two sport thing you know there is Craig again for the first down and he is decked by Francis as I was, was going to say as the Raiders continue to run rough shot over the Cincinnati front seven you know, I mentioned the fact about the two-sport situation. Of course, everybody's cognizant of the fact that Deion Sanders uh, does both, certainly not as adroitly. But I just don't think Deion knows doesn't have quite the same ring to it, do you think? Not quite. Deion knows hockey. Deion, no. Deion knows diddly. I, nah, I don't think so. Close. <laughs> no, 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 not even, no, it's not even close. I don't think so. You're not. You're right. First down just outside the 28-yard line. Raiders lead 7 nothing, and here they come again with Roger Craig. They may never throw the ball again. Not in this ball game. Not if, not if they keep coming up second and five, they're not. The offensive line for the Raiders is doing an outstanding job there as we look at the ticker and some of the scores. Kansas City, Cleveland, no score. Redskins out in front. Buffalo by three over New England. Houston trailing Pittsburgh early. Giants leading Tampa Bay early. Detroit leading Minnesota. Green Bay in front of Indianapolis. And here it is Raiders seven and Cincinnati nothing with 42 seconds and counting time remaining in the first quarter. Roger Craig, four carries, 27 yards rushing for Craig. Play action on the end around and a lofted pass to Steve Smith. Charlie, I was about to say, you know, that Mike White and Terry Robisky and Tom Walsh, the offensive cognoscetti for the Raiders, are doing an outstanding job with play calling. This one, I just don't understand. You know, I mean, I think the shortest run of the day has been like four yards. Why bother with this? Why, why are you messing with a trick, fake, reverse throw to the fullback on the other side? I think they got bored. <laughs> That's not, I mean, they ran right. You know, no, you no, run no. left, you run no, right. Let me you tell you bored. something. <laughs> the one thing they're not getting is bored because the Raiders are very serious about this. Every single player I talked to said there's no way we're looking past Cincinnati, but I, I don't like that call at all in that situation. That was the first pass on this drive. Third down and six. First down, Marcus Allen. Charlie, last week against the Seattle Seahawks, Marcus had Marcus nine Allen. carries for 54 yards. Now that's twice he's come in on third down with big runs. Has he lost anything? Boy, I don't think so. Look at how he makes the cuts. And look how he doesn't take a big hit. One of the things that's always separated Marcus Allen is his ability to avoid the big hit and make those big runs. We'll be back after this. It is such a pleasure to watch this man, Marcus Allen, play football. You know what? There have been a lot of great players for the Silver and Black. Seven, count them, seven in the Hall of Fame. But I would put up that that man right there is arguably the best player ever to wear the uniform. That's a great statement. And he does have great class. First down, 13-yard line. Trader to throw. And a flag is down as the intended receiver, Willie Gall, got knocked off of his route by Eric Thomas. Well, Willie Gall was running a corner route, and Eric Thomas did a nice job of anticipating. But what happened is when they collided, they're going to call them for illegal contact.
We have two fouls on the defense. 57 holding penalty is declined. It's Clark, Number the 22, linebacker. Number 22, defensive pass interference. First down. That's Thomas. That's surprising because it looked to me like the ball wasn't quite in the air. It looked, he made the contact pass five yards. Willie Gall, of course, scares defenses with that all-world speed of his. Of course, you remember him as the high hurdler of Tennessee, you know, and world's fastest uh, football player competitions and things of that ilk. In fact, I think he might be more famous for his bobsledding and things outside of football than he's actually playing. Well, also, he was involved in the world record of the uh, 4 by 100 winning the second leg in Helsinki in 1983 at the first World Championships in track and field. Touchdown, Roger Craig. You know, something has to be done here. Eight-man line or what, I don't know. But you can see, look at that hole. There's just no way there should be that much room inside the five-yard line. I mean, sure, give the offensive line credit and Roger Craig. But man, oh man, Cincinnati's got to do something here to stop the run. That is Roger Craig's first rushing touchdown this year. And only the fifth rushing touchdown this year for the Raiders. Well, he's certainly got a lot of reason to smile. I mean, if, you know, it's interesting heading into this game, Charlie, he was the leading rusher for the Raiders, but he had less than 500 yards. He really hadn't had, uh, with the exception of one game where he had a 99-yard game, nothing too terribly scintillating. But boy, the, the running game for the Raiders is certainly getting well today. It is being reviewed. Now it's a moot point. What are you going to say? Next play, they couldn't get it in the way they're playing? Yeah. And if it does stand, that is Roger Craig's first touchdown as a Raider. He's already got the jacket on. He's thinking to himself, spare me to have to go back out there and do it again. Actually, I'd like to let Marcus go back out there and do it again. Let him get the touchdown. He had the big third down play, remember? The drive, if it stands, will be 54 yards. Well, his, his knees are down, and uh, arguably you could say that he probably didn't get it in the end zone, but uh, at the risk of being overly cynical, I, I, don't, I doubt that they're going to have a real difficult time the way the front seven of the Bengals is playing at this point. So it's not as if people are sitting on the edge of their seats waiting with bated breath for this call. Touchdown. After further review, it stands in the extra point to count. This is important to Roger Craig, not just the fact that he scored the touchdown, but he's running so effectively today. Many people argue that his best days were behind him with the 49ers, and he's somebody who, as I mentioned earlier about James Brooks, another 30-plus running back, is very conscious of taking care of himself and being in shape. And he certainly looks like he's in shape today, doesn't he? Extra point is good. Back to the kickoff in a moment. 1969 was remembered for the amazing Met and walking on the moon, but it was the birth of one of the all-time great broadcasters. 60-year-old Paul Brown, a member of the Hall of Fame, and once the stern taskmaster of the Cleveland Browns. He gave his rookie-laden Bengals a high mark as they passed from the kindergarten of preseason to the first grade of regular league play. <laughs> Do you believe that? Insane. That was in the archive of Spinney Field. Can you believe they still have newsreel? I, I can't believe that that's not disintegrated. <laughs> that's great. It's taken by Dingo. Where did they find I'm sorry. Them? i got to get my composure here. That's unbelievable. Where did you get those glasses? You like it? Well, they were in them. Oh, they, they were in. Oh, yeah. In where? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that my was the, goodness. That was the highlight film of the uh, Cincinnati Bengals first year. All I can say is Foster Grant, no doubt, was not born yet. <laughs> no, oh, that's those right. glasses. Goodness. Oh. Oh, I tell you what, Wally Cox, did he lend those to you? Those yes. are Mr. Peeper glasses? Close, close friend of mine, yes. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's just great. All right, Cincinnati's ball at their own 29-yard line, first down. And the give is to Icky Woods. And he's going to get a couple of yards. Let's go to New York for an update. Charlie, back in the days when that picture of you was taken, the Colts and the Packers would have been a big game. Today, it's 1-10 and ten against 2-9, and nine, and 2-9 and nine leads 7-0 as Vince Workman goes over from the 1. It's not exactly Jim Taylor, but the Packers have the lead. Come on out! 
Thank you, Bob. And I knew you would be watching in New York. <laughs> did they alert you? Hey, it's like it's like the movie that uh, Emilio Estevez did. That was then. This is now. That's right. <laughs> a flag is down. Mickey Woods gets the call again. He has a couple to the 35. And we'll check out the marker. Illegal motion against the Bengals. Tom Benson with the last tackle for the Raiders. 13 minutes, 51 seconds. Time remaining in the first half. 14-0 ball game. Raiders. And the Raiders have dominated all phases. Number 30. Here, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing I have to ask about that. At the risk of belaboring this. No, oh, that's right. Oh, of course, it's because it's your picture. That's right. Yes, the and I hair. got paid. Was that was that the hair? Was that Brill Cream Valvoline? I gotta know. No, it was a pink stuff. It was a gel. Dippity do. That's what it was. Dippity do. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> you used it too, huh? Oh man, oh man. You must have. You must have seen all the Elvis movies. Oh yes. <laughs> Second and 11. Hollis to throw. Pass is complete to McGee, and he is going to be about a yard, maybe two, short of the first down. It'll be third down. Conservative play. The Raiders, the Raiders a little too conservative here in the zone, and Hollis is able to find McGee in the seam. Cutting up the field. McGee, of course, now the leading receiver with Eddie Brown injured. As we mentioned at the outset, the Bengals are shooting a little bit with blanks here. The leading receiver, leading passer, and leading rusher. Brown, Green, and Esiason, respectively, are not playing in this game. And so Hollis and company have their work cut out for them. And again, in case you joined us late, Boomer Esiason, left-hand thrower, got his little finger on his left hand, actually just squished in the ball game against uh, Philadelphia. And... Uh, is unable to grip the ball and cannot throw it and so he cannot play you know it's funny when you think charlie it's funny when you think about that that you know in ba baseball it happens all the time you'll get a guy with blisters on his finger and you can't play and yet here in football you'll say guys will be playing with i remember jack youngblood playing with a broken bone in his leg one time and guys playing with broken wrists but you got to appreciate the fact that if he can't grip it then i like his quote here <laughs> i can only throw it for me although some might think that's what i've been doing already well, as you see there in the graphic, AFC's lowest rated quarterback. This has not been a banner year for Boomer Esiason and the Bengals, needless to say. You know what you got to like about him, though, is he's candid. He doesn't yeah. make any excuses. No. Doesn't talk about the fact, well, you know, the weather was off. Or I just didn't feel very good, or I had a corn on my foot or some jive thing like that. Boomer's a stand-up guy. Looking quarterback Don Hollis now, 3 of 7 for 33 yards. Does have that interception that was picked off by Ronnie Lott that set up the first touchdown drive for the Raiders. You know, if we can get another shot of his face, doesn't he look a little bit like Mark Crawford of the Rifleman? Remember his son? If we get his, when he was about 12 or 13. No, no, but I mean, look at that. Doesn't he look like he'd be saying, hey, Paul, you know, the Rifleman. Remember that show? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah, he looks like, he looks like Mark Connors, Crawford, his yeah. kid. Yeah. The throw is to James Brooks. Ronnie Lott brings him down. And it will be fourth down. Now let's check the starter. Ten-minute ticker. Kansas City, Cleveland, no score. Washington leading by seven. Buffalo in front by three. Houston trailing Pittsburgh now by six. Giants, Tampa Bay all tied at seven. Detroit leading Minnesota. Green Bay still in front of the Colts. And here, the Raiders lead the Bengals by a score of 14 to nothing with 11.46 in counting. That is the time remaining in the first half. Low snap, but he gets it away. Tim Brown on the return. He's to the 50. Cuts a head fake to the inside and goes all the way for the score. 75 yards. What an outstanding job by Steve Ortmeyer and the special teams of the Los Angeles Raiders. Torin Dorn, Aaron Wallace, A.J. Jimerson set up a terrific wall for Tim Brown. Watch when he cuts to the left. Look at the block right there. Bussy is out of the play, and that's in effect it. Watch the blocks come back. Anthony Smith, A.J. Jimerson right there, and you can see right downfield, Elvis Patterson totally confuses the punter, Lee Johnson, and Tim Brown has a walk into the end zone. Now 
now he turns around to watch himself on the big screen. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I love it. Players can do that now. Yeah, but he Check likes what he out. sees. He's oh, I did it again. For 75 <laughs> yards. And the extra point is good. The Raiders now out in front. 21 to nothing. As we come back to Riverfront Stadium, 11:27 time remaining in the second quarter, and the Raiders with a commanding lead and a low squib type kickoff. It's Jim Riggs who picks it up on the return, and let's go back to the punt return by Tim Brown. The most difficult thing in the punt return is take a look right here. You're going to see Dan Land and Torin Dorn working on the sprinter, Barney Bussey. Now, as he comes downfield, their job is to keep him away from Brown. Five yards away, they've done their job. Now, if we can stop it right here, take a look at the wall that is setting up right here. That's the proverbial wall that everybody talks about and the effort being made by, as I mentioned, Aaron Wallace, A.J. Jimerson. Look right there. You can see Napoleon McCallum. And there it is. There's the seam that Tim Brown utilizes. And downfield, Elvis Patterson turns the punter around. And you've got to be happy for Tim Brown, who in 1988 was the Pro Bowl returner. But since then, knee injury, everybody questioned whether or not he still had it. Obviously, on a 75-yard return like that, you'd have to say that Tim Brown definitely still got it. He does. He does. Hollis to Brooks for a yard. That Davis and Vincent were there for the Raiders. And it's going to be second down and nine. We're moving on the 11 minute mark time remaining in the second quarter. Hollis to Icky Woods. And Icky has four to the 44. And it will be second down, third down and five and so it is time now for our first xerox sports facts who led the bengals in receiving in their inaugural season 1968 and of course would have been the star of the highlight film that i, I narrated boy oh boy some good geez nice good receivers yes. chip myers maybe that's one of that's before isaac curtis so yeah. it wasn't him huh. Woods, Question. five carry icky woods five carries 24 yards from the shotgun. Bramble throws, has the first down to Brooks. Sips a tackle inside the 40, 38 yard line. Raider territory, first down. hard to believe that, that five foot nine 180 pounds can run through those kind of tackles but it's Hollis's mobility that enables this to happen everybody is covered now watch when he cuts out Winston Moss has to make a decision right there he decides to go after the quarterback and leaves James Brooks all alone now watch this young man break tackles right through that tackle stiff arms a guy about 20 pounds heavier than he is and finally they have to come over I, I have to remind you and I know that I'm overly excited about this man but for somebody who is a running back, who this month will turn 33 years of age, five foot nine, 180 pounds, you just gotta like this you guy. Do. You just you do. do. And he has done it year in and year out. And especially now this year, you know, the team's one and 10, they're down 21 to nothing, you gotta like that kind of effort. It is high tipped, it is incomplete, Barber. The intended receiver, it will be second down. There's a flag they're drop gonna, back at the 40. -point. Charlie, they're going to call Greg Townsend for hitting Hollis in the back of the head. Townsend was complaining about that. He didn't feel like he hit him that hard. On the replay, hopefully we'll get a chance to see it. You can see him shaking his head. 93 of the defense. Roughing the passer, shot to the head. 15 yards, first down. Townsend coming in from the left. Now, where does the right hand go? See that? It never, it never did hit his head, but it looked like it. It hit the shoulder pad. That's unfortunate. Gee, there's a surprise. The Raiders most penalized. <laughs> well, I can, I can remember back. I can remember back in the years of the 70s. That would be a half season total. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you guys, you've got to get serious if you really want the record. All right, it's a first down at the Raider 23 yard line. Los Angeles is up 21 to nothing with nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Quarterback draw. Good defensive play by Aaron Wallace. He anticipated it and he made the play. Well, the left tackle in that case is supposed to keep Aaron Wallace out. Watch, you can see, now watch when Munoz takes off, but Wallace is like a 4 6 guy. You got to give him at least a little bit of a bump. And coming down the line of scrimmage, he takes a, an excellent angle to cut down Hollis. Let's 
So a loss of a couple to the 25. It'll be second down and 12. Young man has pretty good poise, though, doesn't he? This Don Holland. Carbolas battle for the ball, and the Bengals have it. Well, yesterday Sam Weiss was telling us about this young man's great mobility and that he would use the standard option. But let's face it, in the professional football level, the option is not a play utilized too well. And boy, there's some bugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scott Davis comes in and just creams Hollis before he has any option of either moving or pitching the ball. The ball hits him in the hip and he has no idea. Thank goodness the hustle of Kozerski enabled him to get the ball back. It'll be third down and about 20. Certainly that graphic right there contributes to the fact that they are 1 and 10. Brooks is in motion. Flags are down. They, did, they didn't run out of time. I checked the clock. Four seconds left. You know, you're talking about the poise of Hollis. What happened? Four snap, number 78, broke his stance, ball start. What happens a lot of times is that you have a different cadence. Somebody like Anthony Munoz is certainly no inexperienced player. Watch just to the far right of your screen. Anthony Munoz is going to rock a little bit, and that's what the official sees. There's somebody who's been listening to Boomer's Count for the last five, six years. Now, all of a sudden, you have somebody who, instead of going, hut, 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 goes, ha, da, 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 you know, and has a different... With a little... Uh, has a different... With a Texas draw. With, with a Texas draw. <laughs> exactly right. Hut, hut, hut. Yeah, there it is. So there okay, it is. You're right. You've captured it. Okay. <laughs> third and... Third and 25. Just call me Tex Christensen for now. Pump fake left. Comes back right. It is incomplete. Got there a little... The ball was in the air a long time. He was going to Reggie Rimber. Washington had the defensive coverage. It'll be fourth down. Sam Weiss was telling us that he's high on Reggie Rimber. Hollis actually makes a very good athletic play here. For all intents and purposes, he's going to the left, pulls it back, and he's got Rimber out there. It hits him between the eights, a little bit of a wobble. That's still a catchable ball, even though you have to give credit for Washington coming up and making the collision. Charlie, this is interesting here. Lee Johnson the is long going range, to attempt the, the long-range kicker. The long-range kicker. kicker. He has, he's one for one this year from 53 yards away, and this will be a 55-yard attempt. And Jim Breach is the holder, and it may just make it not. Close on distance, off to the left. Score remains 21-0 Raiders. This is Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen with 7.35 left to go in the first half. Sam White and his Bengals are trading the Raiders by a score of 21 to nothing. McCallum comes back on the ground and he'll pick up three to the 40. It'll be second down and seven. Our Xerox Sports Facts. Who led the Bengals in receiving in their inaugural season of 1968? The answer is... Essex Johnson, right? Essex. No, no, the what? big guy... Oh, my no. gosh! No, say it ain't so! Bob Truppy. <laughs> and Truppy tells... When he scored his first touchdown, he celebrated about like this, and when he came over the bench, Paul Brown said, Son, act like you've been there before. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Here's McCallum. Time for an update. Let's go to New York and Bob Costa. Charlie, watch this catch in Foxborough by Thurman Thomas. Jim Kelly scrambles out of trouble, dumps it off. It's behind Thurman, reaches back, one-hands it in the right arm, and brings it into the end zone. For Kelly, his 26th touchdown pass. That's the league's leading figure. New England just kicked a field goal to pull within seven, but they trail on their home field 10-3. So, Charlie, who's your MVP of the league, Jim Kelly or Thurman Thomas? Both. Really? Co-MVP. Co Thurman Thomas is, is I'd awesome. go. I'd go with Thurman. Oh, I'd, yeah. I'd go with Thurman, yeah. They might be able to do it without Kelly. They could not do it without Thurman. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that. Frank Reich has come in and done some good yeah. things for them. Yeah. And when Thurman goes out, they're just not the same team. McCallum just carried. Crumry with the tackle. It was third down and three, and they come up short. The kicking team is going to come in. 
And as you can see, the opponents have uh, ridden roughshod over the Bengals in the second quarter. Yeah, but listen to the crowd. There was just a little bit of a cheer there. Of course, this is the first time the Bengals have stopped the Raiders. And now it gives a chance for Jeff Gossett. Well, you know, this is actually an interesting story, Jeff Gossett. This man leads the NFL in net punting average of 39.5. Why is it that all of a sudden he would kick so well? The guy's been with like five different teams. He has found his comfort zone or his kicking zone. But okay. he's doing the job. We'll be back. And Elvis Patterson, known as Toast, you can see him circled there. He gets his revenge. Coming downfield, he is not blocked. Good hang time by Gossett. He makes the big play. Elvis Patterson staying in the league now, over 30, as a great special teams player. You might have remembered him as a cornerback for the world champion New York Giants back in 1986. And he got the nickname Toast. Because he did get burned. I thought it was because his mo mother's name was Melba. It is. Oh, okay. also. <laughs> Melba. Moving right along, Hollis has completed six of 11, and four of his six completions have been to the running back James Brooks. That, of course, is Don Hollis, the rookie quarterback for Cincinnati. And he hands off to Icky Woods as they start from their own 13 yard line. And he'll pick up about three. It'll be second down and seven. This is certainly one of the most upbeat people I've ever met. You know, Charlie, yesterday when he had the chance to talk with him, here's a team that's 1-10, and ten, and take a look at this quote. We're not ready to concede the season. When you start doing those things, you say to your fans, we're playing for next year, thanks for buying tickets this year. And his attitude was anything but quit yesterday. In fact, that was his big line. We don't want anybody to have the Q word in their mentality. Little play action fake by Hollis. He is going to keep. And when we talked to Sam, he was talking about the young quarterback. He described him as gritty was his description gritty i think that's a pretty good word for hollis well you know and the other thing too is the kid had no shakes that's what surprised me i mean here for two weeks in a row now he's going against two of the best pass rushers in the national football league and the eagles and the raiders and he kind of shrugged his shoulder and said yeah well let's get it on yeah, we're ready to play of course the flip side of that is when you're one and ten you don't have a whole lot to lose six of 11 53 yards no touchdowns at one interception by ronnie lott Raiders are on top, 21 to nothing, as we move on the four-minute mark time remaining in the first half. Third down. Flag is down, and the pass is dropped by Tim McGee. Well, it's a moot point because they're probably going to call holding here. But, you know, that, that certainly has got to be frustrating, you know, the young quarterback. Now, that's about the third pass that it I've is. seen drop today. It is the third. You know, if you're going to put so much, you know, if you're going to put the onus of responsibility upon a rookie shoulders as a quarterback, he's got to get some help from veteran players. The foul was on Kazerski. Illegal hands to the face is declined. will be fourth down. Right in the middle of the screen, you see 64 with a hand on the face mask, pulling Howie Long down, and that's what the official sees. Lee Johnson will be kicking. You can hear the hollering. Low snap, bounce. He is decked in his loose ball, picked up, touchdown by the toast, Elvis Patterson. Well, the jungle, Charlie, the jungle has become the petting zoo. Invite everyone to come. There was a low snap last time, but Lee Johnson not able to come up with this one. Tries to get the kickoff, but Aaron Wallace is right there and just creams him. Certainly punters aren't used to that sort of collision. As you mentioned, the toast, Elvis Patterson right there with the garbage and an easy touchdown. And the extra point to come as we take another look. Now you can see it's interesting. If we can come back and take a look at that, if you take a look at the snapper when he did that, he second-guessed himself and he looked at himself again. After the extra point, maybe we'll get a chance to see it. He looked at his hands like he had something slick on them, but it's too late now. And the extra point is good, and here's another quick look. Take a look at the center. Now when the height comes up, take a look at what he does with his hands. He looks down. There, he just looked down at his hands again. He wasn't sure of himself. It's a comedy of errors for the Bengals coming out, and we'll be back. Raiders, four touchdown lead. 3.55, time remaining in the second quarter. Raiders are up 28 to nothing. As Jager will kick off with Garrett and Dingle at the deep backs, and this time he sails it deep. 
And he's taken a couple of yards in the end zone by Dingle, and then he has stopped right at the goal line for the touchback. Decision-making process has been difficult for the Bengals. You see right there, that's Ed Brady, the long snapper. Earlier, people came over and pat him on the head and tried to make him feel a little bit better, but that doesn't help when you get your punter cream and you give up an easy seven points. For the Raiders, their four touchdowns, Steve Smith from a yard away, Roger Craig from just about the same distance. Tim Brown, a 75-yard punt return, and the Toast Patterson, as you saw, picking up the loose ball and going in from about a yard out. Total yards, Raiders 104, Cincinnati 63. As you look at Don Hollis, the rookie quarterback from Rice, taken in the fourth round of the draft. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Man, oh, man. We've got a timeout. We'll step aside for a moment. James Brooks, the ball carrier. There's nothing there. Scott Davis with the tackle. Let's check the starter. Ten-minute ticker. Cleveland continues to lead Kansas City. Dallas and Washington now tied at seven. Buffalo out in front of New England as Bob Costas gave us that update. Pittsburgh now leading Houston by seven, courtesy of the three field goals. And you can take a rundown of the uh, rest of the game. Hollis pass is complete to McGee. And he is dropped at the 28-yard line. So it'll be third down and a couple. Exact same play they had earlier when they just missed the first down to McGee out in the flat. Same, oddly enough, the Raiders are in the same zone defense, and Hollis looking to his left finds McGee in the flat. Tell me your assessment of Hollis just from a look. His first start, rookie season, he, he, he looks rather... I like his poise. I like the way he looks. Well, I would have agreed with you until he called timeout there coming from the sidelines. That, that shows to me a lack of poise. You just got done talking with the coaches. Why do you need to call timeout? Down the sideline and out with the first set. With that exception, how has he looked? Well, go ahead and ask me about his speed. How is his speed? Yeah. Oh, boy, he turned up field and ran right past Greg Townsend like he was standing still. Design rollout here to the right. Hollis looks upfield. You can see right there, he makes, it, makes Ricky Ellison backpedal and turn around and enables him to get an extra five, six yards. And answer to your question, how do I like his poise? That's too early to tell. Okay. I mean, it's all well and good to say he's about a 50% completion percentage, but... Hey, they're in a game where he's got none to lose. They're getting hammered 28 to nothing. And so I'd like to see him in a game where he's got to, you know, put a little bit more on the line than this. Two-minute warning will now be given to both bitches. The score, Raiders 28, Bengals nothing. With two minutes to go in the first half, the Raiders with a game well in hand, 28 to nothing in front of Cincinnati. Not exactly a wild and crazy group, is it? First down, Cincinnati at their own 42-yard line. Hollis in the shotgun. Brooks comes in motion. And Hollis will pick up maybe a yard to the 43. It'll be second down and nine. Howie Long. Makes the tackle. Now in their hurry-up mode. Second and nine, little play-action fake. Swing pass right side to the tight end, Holman. And he has it at the 48-yard line. Picks up, a, picks up five on the play. It'll be third down and four. And again, they will stay in that two-minute drill. No, he gives it to Brooks, and then he has the play-action pass fake behind it, and Brooks goes out of bounds and stops the clock at the 45-yard line of the Raiders. A nice play. Well, when Mike Barber, the wide receiver, got away with a big-time hold on, on, on Washington, 
Washington, the Lionel Washington. Take a look here as he cuts to the outside. He gets past Eddie Anderson. Look at the tackle job right there. You can see that the jersey is actually being pulled out. And James Brooks, as you say, gets the first down and stops the clock. The Raiders rushing average per rush just over five and a half yards. The Bengals just barely over two yards per rush. The ball just inside the Raider 45 yard line. First down, Hollis to throw. And he will be dropped for a loss of a couple of yards on the play by Anthony Smith and Howie Long. And a timeout is taken on the field, so the clock is stopped now with 54 seconds left to go in the first half. That is the second sack of the ball game for the Raiders. Well, you know, one of the things that happens when you haven't played very much is you don't have a feel of where the people are coming from. You know, Hollis has the great speed and the mobility, but in that sack, you could see that he couldn't feel anybody coming. You know, he's not used to that yet, and that's, that's one of those things that you can only gain through experience. It'll be second down and 12 with the ball on the 47-yard line. Do you go deep? Why not? <laughs> Do you go short? Uh, second and 12, no, you got to go with an intermediate route. Take the wide receivers on a double in, cross the tight end underneath, catch the ball for nine yards, come up, run the ball for the first, you still have two, what, they have one timeout left? Uh-huh. What, what, what am I, a theorist all of a yes. sudden? I thought I was an answer. No, I like it. I like okay. your theory. Right. This is the quarterback carry all the way to the 30 or 25 or 20. And so all of a sudden, Don Hollis, the most effective running back for the Bengals, carries. Gary Lewis finally got him, but not before he picked up 27 yards. So now, he, he doesn't understand. You see him looking at the watch, yelling at everybody, hey, Don, here. You've got the time now. Nice block on the outside by Tim McGee, who does an outstanding job getting McDaniel out of the way. Hollis gets out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And I thought that was cute. He comes back, and he's pointing at his watch. And someone just said, hey, Don, you're out of bounds. The clock stopped. It's cute. Out of six carries, he's rushed for 35 yards. He lost it. Oh, almost caught by Brooks. Just off of the fingertip. Again, the athleticism of Hollis. You have to like what it is he's trying to do, but in this case, James Brooks is only about 5'9". If he's 5'10", 5'11", he gets this ball. Just a little bit past his fingertips. Tough catch. JB. Second down and 10. The ball at the 20-yard line. 39 seconds left in the first half. is going to be sacked for the third time the ball pops out Cincinnati has it and now the officials stop the clock they stop it after the sack automatically and then they will reset it but Cincinnati will go ahead and take their last time out as Hollis comes to the sideline Greg, Ta Greg Townsend from the right side of your screen known to his teammates as Town Sack does exactly that first stripping the ball and then sacking the quarterback, and fortunately, being a little bit alert in that situation was Joe Walter, the man who Townsend was able to beat on the sack. Two-time Pro Bowler, Greg Townsend now one of, if not the major force in the defensive line for the Los Angeles Raiders. Came into the league as a 240-pounder out of TCU. I think he's gained a little since those days, don't you? Yeah. Or is it just the sweatshirt? No, no. It's, it's, it's the layers <laughs> to fight the battle to go. Be with us to all afternoon here on NBC for the second half of the doubleheader. Uh, many of you to see the Miami-Chicago game. The Bears, of course, that 9-2 record. Uh, Denver and Seattle, another battle in the West as the Broncos are leading in the West. And San Diego uh, against the New York Jets in New York. And the Chargers are 3-3 three and three their last six games and now beginning to show some sparks. They could, you know, be uh, upset and minded as they come down uh, to the end of the season. They host the Raiders next week. Well, I certainly remember, you know, that Miami-Chicago game, one of the more prominent games I remember was the Monday night game back in 85 when they ended their hopes of an undefeated season. 
incomplete Barber. And a flag is down at the six-yard line. <laughs> Whistles are sounding and people are still bumping each other as Lott comes up with the ball. I'll be interested in this call because it looked to me like Barber pushed a little bit to come back and get the ball, but evidently the official here doesn't see it that way. He thinks that he got hooked. Defensive pass interference. Push down. We get a chance to see it again. Looks like the ball is thrown behind and Barber jumps back and tries to make the catch. Let's take a look in the middle of the field. Watch as it comes to 86 as he comes across. Now see, he pushes Dorn away. The problem there is that Dorn didn't look back. If he looks back, then of course there's no call. But it didn't look like Dorn had his hands on him or anything. And I don't think the official quite saw it that way. So they'll spot it just outside the five-yard line. And it's first down and goal to go with 23 seconds left to go in the first half. Daniel is going to get called for this, and I'm not sure he has much of a beef. This time it looked pretty clear that he got a hold of Reggie Rembert. It's whether or not to be holding. Pass interference in the end zone, number 36. First and goal, the one. What I was about to say is the difference, obviously, in this case between defensive holding and pass interference is that it's half the distance. In this case, now watch. It just pushes him in the back a little bit. I don't understand. What's wrong? No, no, no that's, that's not good. No, no, that's ticky-tack. Raiders got job there. That wasn't a good call. Remember, with a little good hand action, was maneuvering what it looked like behind him. Yeah, but you had, you know, in that case, you had Lionel Washington, who had already, you know, he had his position set. So it's marked at the one-yard line, first down, goal to go. If he would, a flag is down. He is in the end zone, but there is a marker dropped at the four-yard line. I wonder whether or not the Bengals were set in that situation. Number 70 of the defense is out of the clock. It is declined. 11 plays on a drive that covered 80 yards. And Cincinnati is on the scoreboard. Right side, Icky Woods. You recall 15 touchdowns back in 1988. The man that made the shuffle famous, but I very... I very much doubt whether or not you're going to see the shuffle on the sidelines when you're down 28 to 7, or 6 rather. Okay, now 7. Now 7. All right. By the way, for Jim Breach, those of you that are interested in su such things, Jim Breach now has scored in 177 straight games. That is an NFL record. And the score now, the Raiders 28, the Bengals 7, and we have 15 seconds left to go in the first half. I like that. Don't please. You know, I mean, it's all well and good to talk about dancing and everything else, but Icky's wise not to get up and do anything at this point. Not when you're down 28 to 7. And I find it interesting, too, you know, that you mentioned that about Paul Brown with Bob Trumpy. You know, someone had said, hey, you know, don't do that sort of thing. And, of course, this man made that whole dance craze happen some three years ago. But And, I, and I'll tell you something else that the late Paul Brown told me. Okay. And this was during the offseason and way away from football. He said... Icky tried to teach him the dance, and he couldn't do it. <laughs> well, and I can, can you can you visualize though? Icky went to Paul Brown, and he's teaching the dance, and he's trying to, and he just yeah, he that just is that, that's it. a funny Isn't shot. A great, yeah, the thought a of great mental picture. The thought of Paul Brown trying to get funky. You're right. Yeah. That's that's different. I miss Paul. I really do. He's a great man. What a contributor that he was to the National Football League. Yeah. Unbelievable the things that he he did. So many things that you can address to what he was. Messenger guards. You face know, mask. Yeah, face mask, quarterback audibles. Yeah. You know, the only man in history to have a team named after him. You know, all those sorts of things. Films, you know, coaches full time. Here's the kickoff. It goes through the end zone. The touchback will bring it out to the 20-yard line. And I was going to say, in addition to that, Charlie, think of the legacy of great coaches who are underneath him. Uh, the yeah. Shulas, the Knowles, the Walshers, people like this. I mean, they, there's a great credit to that man and what he has done for, for, for professional football. So the Raiders uh, and his son Mike Brown, who you see there in the glasses, is now running the operation here for Cincinnati. What did he, he have to say to you yesterday? I noticed that you were in a very we, we, animated conversation. We, had a, we, had a, it, it, we were talking about this season and uh, how that uh, 
they have played well enough. They have played better than what the record itself shows. And, and then you talked about the young man and quarterback, uh, Hollis, and it was an opportunity to take a look at him and to see him where they need uh, help. Uh, and they, they feel like the, one of the key places that they need help is in the defensive line to, to put some pressure. They have one great defensive lineman that can change a whole defense around. It's those kind of things. Yeah, but don't they? Doesn't everybody want one of those? Of course. You know, it's of like course. saying we want a franchise quarterback. It was but. owner talk. Yeah, okay. It's owner you talk. Got it. Yes. All right. It is halftime with the score: Raiders 28, Bengals 7. Welcome back to Riverfront Stadium. The Raiders leading Cincinnati by a score of 28 to 7 as we get set for the second half kickoff. The Raiders creeping up, anticipating the possibility of an onside kick. And it is. And it is recovered by the Raiders at the 42-yard line of Cincinnati. And that is A.J. Jimerson who makes the recovery as we now take a look at the Coors Light halftime stats. Well, there's not, not really a big discrepancy except in time of possession, but of course that's very deceptive, the time of possession, because two of the Raiders' four touchdowns were instant touchdowns, one being a long punt return, and the other, of course, being the botched snap, which Elvis Patterson was able to march in for six. And so right there you can see the yards as the old Mark Twainism applies, and sometimes there are lies, damn lies and statistics. And those are our statistics for you. <laughs> And the Raiders open on the ground effectively as they were in the first half rushing with Roger Craig. And they'll mark it at the 38-yard line, a gain of four. So it will be second down and six. The scoring in the first half, Steve Smith and Roger Craig scoring both from a yard out. Tim Brown, a 75-yard punt return. Toast Patterson after Wallace Knocked the ball out of the arms of the would-be punter. And then Icky Woods for Cincinnati from a yard out. Incomplete. Willie Gaunt, the intended receiver, and Eric Thomas had the coverage. Yeah, that's too bad. That was a good throw by Schrader. He threw it behind, but that was, that was a very catchable ball. Willie Gaunt has struggled a little bit this, this year. After last year, nearly 20 yards a catch, 50, 50 catches, and nearly 1,000 yards. You reach it, that's not exactly a really big effort there by Galt, the sprinter, to come back and get that. This is, geez, come on. Feel free to slow down and give it a try, Willie. Schrader, that is only his fourth attempt in the ballgame. He's two of four for 15 yards passing. Shows you how effective the running game is. And his special teams. Yeah. Third and six. It's out of one would-be sack, and the next man decks him, and that is Daniel Stubbs who got him, and all of a sudden, the crowd beginning to get into it here in the second half. Francis was also applying pressure. Charlie, one of the graphics we had is that the Cincinnati Bengals are last in the league in this category, only 10 sacks in 11 games. You can see he avoids Francis there, but St Stubbs is able to pick up the garbage and then get in the face of Steve Wright and make a big issue of it. But, of course, that's really foolish because Steve Wright had held him out for a very long time. He was just able to come up with that one. For Cincinnati, that is their first sack in the last two games and their 11th on the year. And here is the kick by Jeff Gossett. There's pressure, but he gets it away, and he goes for the corner, and he gets it. Good kick. They're going to mark it out at the 11-yard line. And we're beginning to get a few more snow flurries as we had about 11 o'clock this morning. And the temperature is dropping. It is really getting cold here in Cincinnati. So the Bengals will go to work just inside their own 11-yard line, first down trailing 28-7. to Their first offensive opportunity of the second half, and they are led by the rookie quarterback, Don Hollis, who had his 24th birthday on Friday. And his mom and dad, Carol and Wynn, are here in the stands to watch their son's first start as a rookie in the National Football League.
Icky Woods. And we'll give him a yard to the 12. It'll be second down and nine. Long and Ellison on the stop. And Cincinnati has really been banged up. And they are missing on offense. They're leading rusher and leading receiver in green and brown. And also, of course, as you follow the uh, trials and tribulations of the Bengals, they've got all kinds of bumps and bruises and injuries on that offensive line, which certainly has affected their production. Craig Taylor comes in as a running back for Cincinnati. Second and nine. And Taylor gets the call, and he spins out close to the 15-yard line. So he has three. And it'll be third down and six as we check the Hertz 10-minute ticker. Cleveland shutting out Kansas City in the third, 17-0. Dallas in front of Washington. They may give them their first loss of the year. Buffalo by one over New England at the half. We've got some interesting games working. Pittsburgh in front of Houston. Upset working there. Giants and Tampa Bay tied 7-7. Possibilities there. Detroit by three over Minnesota. And Green Bay now leading Indianapolis by a score of 7-3. Here it's Raiders 28, Cincinnati 7. So another exciting Sunday in the National Football League. Hollis with good protection. Goes right into the arms of Tom Benson. And Benson battles his way down to the three-yard line. Well, it, it really isn't so much Hollis as you give credit to Scott Davis, who comes and hits him just as he's about to throw, and the ball goes right into the arms of Thomas Benson, who appreciates this largesse. What's to the right of your screen? Scott Davis, number 70, is going to hit him right at the last minute, and certainly that changes the trajectory of the ball, and it goes right between the five and the four. Tom Benson, a former linebacker for the Atlanta Falcons and San Diego Chargers, picked up on plan B, makes a pretty good run. Right from the back, there it is. Ouch. And so the Raiders had the ball just outside the Cincinnati three-yard line first down. Play action fake by Schrader. And a terrible pass to Steve Smith. <laughs> well, that, he, had, he had too many options. He could have walked in. He had two men to throw it to, and he couldn't decide. It's just like you said earlier. He's only thrown four passes today. He's rusty. Look at this. Is, this is really sad. He shot puts this into the feet of Steve Smith. And he and, had Glover deep. He could have gone to Oh, look at that reaction. He knows it's goofy. Oh, yeah. And, of course, if you're Steve Smith, you're upset, too, because you got an easy touchdown. Trader now three of five for 15 yards throwing, but he has missed his last three. Second down and goal to go. And into the end zone is Marcus Allen. When in doubt, you give it to Marcus. I tell you what, you know, he he's had three carries today, and every one of those carries has been significant. But this carry was especially significant, Charlie, because right there he just scored his 94th touchdown, which makes him, I believe, seventh on the all-time list. Oh, hey, look at that. Seventh on the all-time list. He just broke a tie that he had with coming into this game with the great Jim Taylor of the Green Bay Packers. And his first touchdown of the year. Well, that's due to the fact that, of course, those who follow football know that Marcus had a knee injury in the first game of the season against the Houston Oilers. And last week against the Seahawks was his first action since that first week. But there's the king of pay dirt. 94 touchdowns career for number 32, Marcus Allen. As we come back to Riverfront Stadium, Shane Garrett on the return and is decked at the 19-yard line. You know, for the life, Robinson with the you know, for the life of me, Charlie, I was sure that Santa lived at the North Pole. No, he lives in Covington. One of the, one of the best kept <laughs> secrets. <laughs> Normally doesn't come out this early in the season. Uh, he's, he's obviously a Bengal fan. Average on first down. Raiders five yards and Cincinnati 1.8 yards. He spotted at the 20-yard line where the Bengals go to work, trailing 35-7 to with just over 11 and a half minutes to go. We're in the third quarter. Hollis with a play-action fake. Icky Woods, a good nice reception. Catch. Nice catch as he goes to the 29-yard line. 
You know, that's not exactly Icky's strong suit. You know, when they go to the passing situation, he comes out. But this is a nice reach here. And Hollis, one of the things Hollis lacks, obviously, at this point is touch. Look how close he is to Icky and how hard he throws it. Yang, he throws that. Wow. Those tackified gloves paid off there. Nice catch by number 30, Elbert Icky Woods. That's Second his first down name. in there. In case you're wondering. A, a re no huddle huddle. When I asked Sam White about the young man, Don Hollis, and the uh, complicated offense, he said, it's not any different. He said, we just call the same place as people do in the huddle. We just do it out where everybody can hear it. Two seconds on the clock, and the give is to Icky. Why did they spend that much time deciding that? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was, I mean, I could have decided that a lot sooner. <laughs> yeah, that didn't... Uh, oh. That didn't take Fellini to figure that no, one out. No, it didn't take all of that of the play clock to get it done. There. Well, need, needless to say, he has to Stop expedite the process due to the fact that down by four touchdowns, they can't spend all that time in the yeah. huddle. So, you know, they got to give it a try. This is what, It's a sugar huddle is what this is called. Oh, the little huddle that close to the line of scrimmage. Do they have a saccharine huddle by chance? Just a thought. DK? Decaf huddle? Yeah. An aspartame huddle? A little swing pass after a couple of fakes to Brooks, and he goes out of bounds. The Howie Long in hot pursuit. It'll be second down. You know, he once sent me a hat. Did he? Yeah. Give me a cowboy hat. He did. Yeah. And it fit. How cliche. A cowboy hat from Dallas. Give me a break. But it was nice. I think he'd signed a new hat deal is the reason that I got that would it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like a big gift no, or it wasn't anything. A, it wasn't to my buddy Charlie. I really think that it was a new hat deal. It wasn't the truth. Okay, that was Brooks, and he was stopped by Townsend. And the ball's at the 40-yard line, and it's third down. You know, Greg Townsend, I, I wanted to make this point. Earlier in the season, you know how periodicals make ratings and things. In, in, in Sport Magazine, they had, you know, the most dominant defensive lineman. And, of course, everybody jumped on the bandwagon with Bruce Smith. But number two was this man right there, number 93. They picked him as the second most dominant defensive lineman in the National Football League. And with the likes of Keith Millards and Reggie Bryce. One ball flag is down. I was going to say, with the likes of those types of people around the league, the Richard Dents, you know, that, that's, that's pretty good company, the Townsend's keeper. That is great company. Here's the call. Before the snap, elite, the center, illegal snap. He double pumped it, five yards, still third down. Double pumped it, I like that. This reminds me, you remember a couple of years ago when Ben Dreyf was saying about that 15 yard penalty, he says, giving him the business. Look at yeah. Hollis, he's looking away. He doesn't even know it's coming. Oh, no, that's right. He's lucky, that, he's lucky that ball was about a. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's lucky that ball was about a right. foot north. Okay, right. we'll leave that one alone. Okay, you're right. <laughs> Still third down. <laughs> oh, boy. That is a cold day. Hollis now has completed 10 of 18 for 79 yards. Listen closely and see if his cadence is a little more high pitched. Now, incomplete at the 40-yard line. This says a lot about the confidence of the Raider defense that they would have Winston Moss man for man with the, their specialist, in this case Mike Dingley. It's a nice job of coverage. Watch 99, not faked out at all, right there. Should have kept running. Dingle was supposed to cut on the out. He had him beat to the outside, and he stopped. That wasn't Hollis's fault. Dingle has to keep going. There. So Lee Johnson will be kicking to Tim Brown, and Tim in this game has a 75-yard punt return for a touchdown. That came with 11.27 to go in the first half. I wanted to mention that Lee Johnson, a former BYU guy, is also third the AFC with over 44 yards of punt. He's been one of the more effective players for the Bengals this season. About a five-yard return for Tim Brown. We've got a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Riverfront Stadium. I'm Charlie Jones along with Todd Christensen. The Raiders with this game pretty well in hand thus far. Uh, what will they need to do to take a run at the playoff? Well, one of the things they're going to have to do, you know, today, as you mentioned, they haven't had to throw. They're going to have to get a little more continuity in the throwing game. But one thing the Raiders have to be happy about is a special teams play today. Yeah. It has been outstanding. Yeah. Raiders have the ball. First down at their own 27-yard line. Surprised that Schrader is still in the game? Yeah, he's only thrown five times. He needs the practice. <laughs> 8.04. Time remaining third quarter. And 
and Roger Craig is the ball carrier. Another guy who I think needs the practice here, and of course we've been singing his praises, is Marcus Allen. Why is he only with the three carries? You know, at this point it's 35 to 7. Why not get him back in the groove? Why not get him in there and get him 10 or 15 carries and get the feeling of getting banged around again? My guess is they don't want to. They don't want to do it because of the artificial surface. Yeah, because except not a lot of give. I understand that, but again, you know, the way things are going, especially playoff bound. Let's let's take a look ahead a little bit. They're going to have to go through Houston or Buffalo and do it on an artificial surface. So, you know, I mean, there's a guy who's in shape. He can yes. take care of himself. He's a big boy. Second down. Roger Craig. It's time for an update. Let's go to New York and Bob Cochran. Bob? Charlie, here's a story we can't really show you because it happened in a CBS game and we're not allowed to show highlights until the game is over with, but it involves Jeff Hostetler of the Giants. He was hit by Tampa Bay linebacker Broderick Thomas, hit his head on the ground. He's suffering dizziness, also may have injured his back. They're taking x-rays right now. He was taken off on a stretcher and replaced at quarterback by Phil Simms. Giants lead 14-7 in the third. Charlie? All right, thank you, Bob. And if, if we can, if it works, if we get a further report, if you can give us another update, because I know not only we would like to know, but also our audience would like to know. Incomplete. Going to Roger Craig. Roger's had quite a workout today. He's been a busy man. Well, again, you know, that's that's my point. You know, he's had his opportunity. He's done a lot of different things in the first half. I'm surprised, as I say, that they don't go with Marcus because, you know, Roger uh, has had, uh, had a number of carries. I don't know. He's got to have around 50 yards rushing. Caught a couple of passes. A lot of people may not realize that that man right there, not that man right there, but the other one, of course, that man right there is pretty good, too. The two of them, Roger Craig and Marcus Allen, have combined for over 900 receptions. Roger Craig with 523 catches. That's more receptions than any running back in the history of the National Football League. So the Raiders certainly have people that can come out of the backfield and catch the ball. And the kick by Gossett. And it's taken to the 20-yard line by Shane Garrett. A flag is down. He'll return it to the 30 if it stands. McCallum was down making the stop. I think they're going to call Fernandez Vincent for holding Elvis Patterson. Of course, you remember last time, there's Elvis standing on the 25-yard line pointing towards it. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Elvis is helping out. <laughs> oh, look at Oh, what now? And Elvis is limping off at the 32-yard line. Junior run back, holding number 34, 10 yards. Down. Probably the most, one, one of the more difficult things is to hang on to those players coming down here and, and sprinting, and that's the case of Patterson with the hood going to the sidelines to get a rest. Six minutes and 24 seconds. That is the time remaining here at Riverfront Stadium in the third quarter. Cincinnati has the ball at their own 16-yard line. First down, they trail 35 to 7. Here's a little sweep to the left side with Dingle. And he is hit at 20, and that goes down the 21-yard line. It'll be second down and five. Charlie, when you were talking with Mike Brown yesterday, one of the things that he admitted to is that despite the fact that they're having problems, he's pleased with the effort. He yeah. says there that they have yet to run up the white flag, and we might not do some of the things we'd like to, but there it is. A for effort, he says. But... But, <laughs> but they're trailing 35 to 7. Yeah. Uh, and in this profession, that's the bottom line. Icky Woods popping to the outside, and we'll check now the Hurts 10 minute ticker to see what interesting things are happening today. Cleveland continues to lead Kansas City big in the third. Dallas by seven over Washington. Buffalo is up only by one. Houston trails, Giants lead. Detroit leads, Green, Green Bay in front of the Colts, and here, 35-7 Raiders. Charlie, I think some of those teams who they were talking about that were going to clinch, you know, teams like Houston and Washington, evidently the teams were playing against and didn't appreciate that, so. Washington with 11-0 record a win today, they had win the NFC East. Houston with a 9-2 record, they could win today, the uh, they'd win the AFC Central. And Buffalo, uh, with a win today, would clinch your playoff berth. <laughs> all three of those, you're right, they're all, they're all fighting with their lives right now. I should tell you, last week I chatted with Matt Millen on the phone. He called me up and he said, we're not, he just flat out told me, he says, he doesn't think we can go undefeated. 
And I asked Icky to the 35. And I asked him about that, and I said, well, what, what are you talking about? Everybody says you're going to go great guns. He says, and he said, no, he said, it's just logic. He said, it's just... It's going to be some. It's going to surprise somebody. It's going to be a game when people don't think it's going to happen. He just doesn't. He just feel like the odds are against him. The ball at the 35-yard line is third down and four. We're moving on the four-minute mark. Time remaining in the third. There's absolutely nothing there for Mike Dingle. Townsend is. Waiting for him. It'll be fourth down. Strange call, third and four. Yeah. Is that a call of a rookie quarterback? I mean, because you have a rookie quarterback that uh, you don't want to risk in that for that well, situation I, I, of another interception, well, sets up another score. Of course, it's not the rookie quarterback making the call. It's no. Sam, and I think he anticipated that maybe, you know, in a, a nickel situation, they could surprise people up the middle. But you know, when it doesn't happen, you look foolish and. When you're down by four touchdowns, running in the middle of the field on third down doesn't make much sense. Lee Johnson will be kicking to Tim Brown. Oh, nice catch. Yes. Takes it on the short out. Flag is down. There's a fumble, a scramble for the ball. Tim Brown on the punt return. Fumble the football. And I believe the Raiders recovered it. recovered by Doran Dorn. Doran Dorn got the recovery. Now we'll check out the flag. I think we had, hold I think we had holding by Dan Land on the run back. You're in the run back. Illegal block from behind. Number 25. 10 yards. First down. Timeout. You are right once again. And we have a timeout. There's that short hop. Good hand as Tim Brown scoots it up as we'll scoot away for just a moment. Pretty good shortstop by the name of Barry Larkin here in Cincinnati, but Tim Brown makes a pretty good short hop himself, and he turns into Marv Thronberry and drops it. <laughs> <laughs> and here is Roger Craig for the Raiders. And it's time now for our next Xerox Sports Facts. Who is the only NFL field goal kicker named MVP in a non-strike season? Ooh, a lot of great kickers. Luke Rosa, Stenerud. Hmm. Non-strike season becomes one of the keys, of course. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, uh, Mark Mosley in 82. That was a strike season. Okay. All right, there it is. Then. Okay. Raiders rushing 107 yards, Cincinnati rushing 106 yards. Throw that number in while we have an injury timeout. All right, we'll give you the answer now. The answer is, to our Xerox Sports Facts, George Blanda in 1970. Do you know? You knew that and you were leading me on, weren't you? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. well okay. okay. You know what? It's interesting. I, you certainly remember this year because oh, you yeah. were broadcasting. Oh. I think it was five or six games that he either won or tied <laughs> in the last behind, 30 yes. seconds. I mean, it was unbelievable. Oh, he became the hero of everybody over 40. I mean, it was just an unbelievable year. And I guarantee, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you that if he was here in the stands, he'd say, I can still play. Oh, he, he can. If he would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time I see him on the golf course, he said, I'm ready. You know, I can still play. Oh, yeah. Get a chance to see the injury here. Wayne, to Wayne Haddix, he's going to get kicked in the head. Ooh. Ouch. Ooh. Look at that. Right in the head. Ugh. He came over and said, how many fingers? I think he'll be all right. Second down and short. Here is Steve Smith, and he will pick up the first down as he goes to the 27 yard line. You know, watching Steve Smith get a carry, I think this is what, maybe his third or fourth, I don't know which, but it reminded me of John McKay when, you know, during the days of the, you know, obviously when they were tail back you, they had a fullback who now is with the Rams. You remember Mosi Tatupu. Yep. Uh, they used to complain about the fact that hey, the fullback never gets the ball. He never gets to see it. And so John McKay <laughs> brought Tutupu up to the office and said, here it is. He let him see it. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. First down Raiders. Moving on the two-minute mark time remaining third quarter. 35-7 to seven ball game. Los Angeles in front. On a very cold afternoon in Cincinnati. 
Schrader's pass is way high. He now has completed only two of seven for 15 yards, and he has missed his last five. Ah, uh, yes, but as a quarterback, there's a much more important statistic than your completions. You're right, there it is, two for seven. But take a look at what this man has done, record as a starter. Very impressive, 51 and 24. You know, oftentimes the court, that, that I think is the measurement of a quarterback. Some of these other things I just don't get. You know, the completion percentage. I mean, earlier, remember we had Jeff George. He had a 65% completion percentage, second in the league, and his team's 0-9. I mean, what is that? That's the statistic that counts right there. 51 and 24. Give Jay Schrader his due. And this pass is complete as Tim Brown pulls it in. And we've got some whistles. A little pushing and shoving contest back at the 23-yard line. Tim Crumry was there along with Leon White. Part of the frustration, I think, for Tim Crumry is the fact that the interior of the Raiders' offensive line has really been doing an outstanding job moving some people off. Don Mosbar has had an exceptional game, hasn't he? Yeah, you know, one of the things that's impressive about him is that he goes back to the days you would remember. Uh, the first guy to do it was a center by the name of Forrest Blue for the San Francisco mm -hmm. 49ers, a tall center. People felt like he couldn't do that. This man is six foot seven, and in talking to some of the people around the league, they argue that since, uh, since Dwight Stevenson is no longer in the league, that Don Mosbar might arguably be the best center. And here is Fernandez, has the first down of the 42-yard line. And how many offensive centers have the Raiders had? Yeah, it's not very many. No. You start with Jim Otto, then you go to Dave Dalby. And in between there, there was a, uh, for a short time, a short period of time, there was Jim Romano. Right. Young kid from Penn State. Then, of course, it went from him to uh, Don Mosby. Four centers. Isn't that incredible? A, that is. In a franchise that goes back to 1960. That well, is incredible. Well, that's... <laughs> Never mind. I, I had a line. True I did my tongue. No, no, no. I'm glad I did. Don't I did say it. Okay. Don't say it. Bite your tongue. Okay. First step. And he'll pick up a couple of yards on the play as we check the Budweiser 10-minute ticker. Cleveland still leading Kansas City. Dallas in front of Washington. Buffalo by one over New England. Houston trailing in that ballgame. Giants leading in theirs. Detroit big over Minnesota. And Green Bay in front of Indianapolis. And that is the end of the third quarter. 35-7 Raiders. Back after these messages from your local station. To Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. This is Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen as we start the fourth quarter. It's the Raiders 35 and Cincinnati 7. And the Raiders have the ball at their own 43-yard line. In a ball game that they have completely dominated. are down. It's a free play for the Raiders. Raider throws, and it is caught by Fernandez. And coming up with the ball as it pops loose is Barney Busby, but they'll bring it back because Cincinnati was offside. They were in the neutral zone. And it'll be a five-yard penalty, and the Raiders will retain possession. Spoils a pretty good catch by Fernandez, and then of course the rest of that uh, goes for naught. Alfred Williams was offside. There is a great face. <laughs> <laughs> run Run Jones, George Run Run Jones, the oldest water boy in the National Football League, 62 years of age, and somebody I kidded him last night. I said, Runner, you're never going to live long enough to look your age. <laughs> We're going to have to change his name to Walk Walk, though. I'm telling you. <laughs> Great softball pitcher, though, I got to tell you. I was impressed with that. He can hit the ball, too. McCallum, the ball carrier. And he will pick up the first down for Los Angeles. Alonzo Mitz with the tackle. Now for an update, let's go to New York and Bob Cossus. Bob? Charlie, the Houston Oilers are a virtual lock, as you know, in the AFC Central. One more win, and they clinch it. But they're still trying to catch Buffalo for best overall record in the conference. They're trying to hold off Denver for second best record in the conference. This will all become important in the postseason. And after Warren Williams scores from the one, the Steelers lead them 23-7. 23 7. 23 7. The other thing, of course, you know, that goes in the mix that Bob was talking about, they want that home field. They want they want to play indoors when they get to 
you know, to postseason play with a Super Bowl indoors, they feel they've got a good shot. They play outdoors, they're going to have a lot of problems in December and January. McCallum carries to the 40-yard line of the Bengals. How do you assess Houston's chances in the playoffs? One of the things that's impressed me about them this year is their defense. You know, everybody gets caught up in Warren Moon in the run and shoot, yeah. but they've done an outstanding yeah. job of shutting teams down. And they've won some pretty big road games. Uh, it, it could have been, I, I tell you what, it would have been pivotal, pivotal, if you think about it in retrospect, had Ian Howfield hit that field goal yeah. against the Redskins. What that would have done for that entire organization. Yeah. And also for Howfield's career, because that, he was That's gone. Right. He was gone, gone yeah. McCallum, 32 yards rushing and seven carries. the case of just trying too hard he doesn't necessarily get hit it just kind of squirts out look at here he just he's struggling a little bit oh james francis gave it a little bit of a tap fulcher tries to short hop it fails and alfred williams the first round draft pick from colorado is able to fall on it watch francis from behind here number 50 pokes it out that's a nice job oh my mistake fulcher e number 33 e shortstop so alfred williams able to fall on it bangles ball at the 40 yard line Trailing 35 to 7 with just over 13 minutes to go. Now it's back to throw a little swing right side to Taylor. And Taylor goes to the 45 yard line. We've been talking about how cold it is here at the ballpark. Just how cold is it? Oh, that gives you a visual idea. Well, 29 degrees with that with that wind, 20 to 30, and snow flurries. That means the uh, the wind chill factor is down below 10 degrees. You know, I thought you had something Carson-esque to say when you said, how cold is it? Oh, no. It's so cold. I did, but I, it was so cold, yeah. I forgot <laughs> it. I forgot <laughs> it. I forgot <laughs> it. That's right. Okay. Dingle is dead. I can't believe I said that either. Alliteration, very good. I like that. Well, Howie Long is really one that makes the play. Watch Howie Long come in, un frankly unblocked, anticipating the pull. Look at number 75. Forces him to go another direction, but Townsend is the one that gets the garbage. And the sad part about that is, you know, in the stats, it'll be tackle for loss for 93, but that man right there, number 75, made the play. How's he playing this year? Well, it's his 11th NFL season, I'm guessing. Oh, no, there it is. It's on the graphic. I'm on the only current player to have played in Oakland. Matt Millen and I had that uh, for a while, and then we got cut. We were gone. But Howie now is the only remaining Oakland Raider. How is he playing? Still a force. He's not the player he once was, but he's still a force. Hollis throws. It is intercepted by Lott in second. Oh, a nice turn out of sideline. Oh, what a play oh, goodness. for Ronnie Lott. His sixth, one, two, three, four, five, sixth interception of the year. Now we got to take a look and see when he goes to the sideline. See if Willie Galt comes over to congratulate him. One hurdler to another. This is just veteran savvy. Reading Hollis all the way, he floats the corner out right here. At number 94, reads it, 42 rather, reads it perfectly. Look at Ronnie Hurdle. Yes, indeed. Greg Foster would be proud of that. Is, I, I got to know, is Willie Galt in the sidelines messing with him? He's got to be. Oh, no, Willie. Oh, now Willie Galt's coming out of the game. <laughs> No, he was on the. Now Willie he had to come on the field. Sure. Yeah, he's got to come over there and say, "Okay, Ronnie, what you need to do is you you got to buck your front leg, bring the trail leg over a little bit lower." <laughs> Believe me, they will kid the heck out of him on the sidelines about that. A uh, first down at the Cincinnati 33-yard line. Back-to-back -back turnovers, a fumble interception. Here is Steve Smith. And they'll mark it about the 16-yard line. Ricky Dixon finally got him. We're moving on the 11-minute mark, time remaining in the game. You know, Charlie, uh, earlier in the day, I had a chance to talk with Paul Zimmerman, a sports writer for Sports Illustrated. We were talking about that position. Not and a how sports writer. V. Oh, excuse Dr. me. Dr. Z. Z excuse yes, me. We were NFL talking man. about yes. how crucial these people are, the Steve Smiths of the league, are to the success of teams in the National Football League. He points out Miami could never run until they got Tony Page. 
Roger Craig had his 1,000-yard seasons when he was behind Tom Rathman. And, of course, the Washington Redskins running game has depended upon Don Warren, who really fills that role for them. And so a lot of times the fullback doesn't necessarily get his due because he doesn't get the ball that often. But people like Steve Smith are invaluable to the success of their teams. And he carries again. And there is Ronnie Lott, two interceptions in today's ball game. Six on the year, 56. Now, I think he had, you know what, there. I think he had 55 coming in. I think, think it should be 57. And he has 57. Uh -huh. wow. He had 54 coming in is the report that we have. Is that right? Wait a minute. Todd will immediately check his uh, notes. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. No, uh -uh. I had 55 uh -uh. coming. Well, like we're going to argue that. Yes, what does he sir. care? <laughs> He's on the all-time well, list. Steve Smith for a yard. And the clock continues to march. 9.47 and coming. One of the things about Ronnie Lott that I think is important to mention, both he and Roger Craig, it's almost, uh, it's like that movie a couple of years ago about the wrestler, a vision quest. They want to prove that San Francisco is wrong about them and letting them go out on plan B. I know Ronnie is a very proud man, and he took that very personally when they put him out. And I guess it's safe to say that he can still play the game. As you can see, there are a couple of SC guys, and you'd appreciate that, a couple of SC guys, Marcus and Ronnie going at it over there. Hang together. Two SC potential Hall of Famers, I'd say, huh? You bet. In the corner, and it is no good. And by the way, let the record show you were right. He came in with 55. He now is 57. Interception on his uh, career. Jamie Holland, Speak the intended receiver. And before you point out that, let me just jump in here with the reminder of the second half of the doubleheader. Stay with us this afternoon. Miami, Chicago. I understand it's cold there also. Denver, Seattle. They're indoors. San Diego and the Jets. All coming up next. Now, you were getting ready to point out. Snow flurries. <laughs> I changed my mind. Okay. Jeff Jager's got a shot at a record here. If he makes it, we'll give it to you afterwards. 29-yard field goal attempt by Jager. That is a big one. Normally, we don't talk about club records, but this is a good one. Well, we just mentioned the guy who was our fax earlier, George Blanda. Jeff Jager is now the all-time season record holder for field goals for the L.A. Raiders. As we come back, the kickoff to Cincinnati, and here is Mike Dingle on the return. And Dingle is knocked out of bounds in the neighborhood of the 35-yard line. Yeah, and he knocked Hollis <laughs> down, too. Yes, it just hasn't been his day. <laughs> his first game as a starter. Derek Crudup got him. We'll step aside for just a moment. We'll be right back. And that's the problem. The athletic ability of number 12, Don Hollis. Yeah, but wait a minute. The whole day you're getting hit by the secondary, and now you have to get hit by your own man. Look at number 12 upended. I mean, the pass rush of the Raiders is bad enough. Why do you have to get creamed by your own guy on the side? Of you? He had to go airborne just to avoid contact. It's a little dump pass here to Dingle, and he'll pick up the first down. You know, you're talking about his parents being here. I'm sure this is a day he'll never forget. You know, you hear the phrase in sports a lot, baptism of fire. In this case, baptism of fire and snow. Hollis has completed 12 of 20 for 93 yards. You know, depending upon what happens here in the last eight minutes, you know, you went back and checked out the graphic. You just shot, saw a shot of Jay Schrader on the sidelines. This could be the least passes he's thrown in his career as a starter. Yeah. Here is Mike Dingle on the carry. And he may pick up the first down. It is very close to that mark. And the 10-minute ticker, Kansas City is still losing. Look at this Dallas over Washington in the fourth quarter, 21-7. Maybe the Redskins' first defeat of the year. Buffalo has padded their margin. It's now 13-9. Pittsburgh big over Houston. Giants by seven over Tampa Bay. Detroit leads Minnesota. Green Bay in front of Indianapolis. And here, the Raiders have the Bengals well in hand, 38-7 with 7.50 left to go in the ball game. Okay, I want, I want you to do this with me in unison, all right? Because this is, a, this is the all-time cliche as we look at those sports. If anybody can be beat on any... Given, given Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, okay. Very good. That's right. And Dingle gets the call again. And 
and is inside the 25-yard line to about the 23-yard line. And we should mention Mike Dingle earlier in the week. He was just playing around with some guys in the locker room, and he slipped and fell and hit his face on the side of a bench, and it took 29 stitches. Hollis, a little swing out to Dingle. And he has to leap to get back to the line of scrimmage. Ricky Ellison got it. Is the fact that if the Redskins do lose today, is it going to be one of those where, in reality, the coaching staff will say, this is, uh, this is good because now we can forget about that, get back to work. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to be in the playoffs. Now we can concentrate on trying to win the Super Bowl. I know. I, I, well, you know, of course, that's what people will say. They yeah. say, oh, well, let's get rid of the streak. But I don't think so. I think that a veteran team like the Washington Redskins, you want to win every week. And let's face it, who doesn't want to be a part of history? You know, now if they go 15-1 and win the Super Bowl, of course, that's a great accomplishment, but it's been done before. Pass is complete to Reggie Rimmer. Touchdown. Rimmer's first touchdown as a bingo. Charlie, yesterday when we were talking to Sam Weish, I asked him about Reggie Rembert. Of course, you might have remembered him from his collegiate days with West Virginia catching passes from Major Harris. The Jets made him a second-round pick, but he just couldn't get along with either the coaching staff or some of the other people there, and they traded him to Cincinnati. And Sam Weish told us that he had little problems here, but he said they liked the fact that he has such incredible athleticism, nearly six foot six. 4440. He says he just goes after and catches balls a lot of people just flat out can't get to. And the extra point in the snow is good. And it is suddenly 38 to 14. There was a flag on the extra point. It was re-kicked. It was again good. Don Hollis with his first touchdown pass as an NFL quarterback. Well, Reggie Rembert is going to come across your screen. You'll see him right in the middle, number 88, right there. Hollis puts it right on. Lionel Washington goes for the interception and doesn't get it, and Rembert's able to walk in for his first National Football League touchdown. Hollis pretty excited. Man, if we can get back to that shot of him with the helmet on top of his head, my goodness. He does look like he's 14, doesn't well, he? I mean, look at that face. There's no way a Razor's touched that. Man, oh, man. 14 of 24, 118, a touchdown, three interceptions. And the Raiders are expecting an onside kick. As you can see, the Bengals, and as we just swing a little to the left, you can pull back, you'll notice that they have a lot of folks gathered and, and up front. And let me tell you something, having been on that team for my entire career, this is no fun because it's a no-lose situation, it's a no-win situation. You're supposed to come up with a ball, but even if you do, you've got all these guys coming towards you and they have one and ten in mind. Well, maybe I'm not going to get the ball, but I'm going to kick the crap out of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought Mike Barr was going to kick it there for a second. Well, he kicked it away. Well, now, and it goes through the end zone. Now, what's foolish about that is that's fine if you're going to kick it away, but why kick it through the end zone and give them a free 20 yards when you've got 10 guys bunched up there? Why not boot kick it down about the 15-yard, give your sprinters a chance to come underneath? You can see Lee Johnson's reaction. I mean, well, that's all. Well, that's great. That's all well and good if he's going to get a touchback, but so what? He and Marv Braden are going at it a little bit. I think the special teams coach wanted something a little different. <laughs> I think you're right. I think it was a, Look at Marv Braden right there. Doesn't he, the guy talking, does yeah, he look uh, a little bit like Bob Newhart? He is Bob Newhart. He is? Yes. Oh, okay, I say we, were the, we were on the elevator this morning. He was going to be a bad time coming now. Yeah, I remember coming up to him and saying, how's Emily? And he didn't... Uh, didn't, yeah, didn't phase him. Didn't register. Raiders have the ball first down at their own 20-yard line. Just over six minutes to go. They're out in front, 38 to 14. The fewest passes that Jay Schrader has ever thrown in a ball game as a Raider, as a starter, flags it down as 15, and uh, he can break that record going fewer Char than that. Charlie, he's going to break it because Ben Sevens is the quarterback. Aha, uh -huh, he is. So that's it. So with Ben Sevens replacing Jay Schrader. We also have some new people on the offensive line. And one, of them, and one of them, Rory Graves, got called for the hold. Vince Evans is an interesting story. There's a man who's been around the block a while. You remember that uh, years ago he was the starter for the Chicago Bears before, before Jim McMahon came and drafted, left him expendable. He went to the USFL and played for the Chicago Blitz, and he was completely out of football until 1987 when Al called him back 
Al Davis, that is. Called him back to play during the, uh, during the scab games. And he's been with the Raiders ever since. Got a great voice, too. He's got a voice like yours. He should be a broadcaster. McCallum, the ball carrier. And Jay Schrader's throwing statistics, 4 of 10 for 30 yards. That is the fewest attempts as a starter with the Los Angeles Raiders. His previous low was 15 attempts. But like you said, that statistic doesn't really make any difference. The statistic that matters, Charlie, is now he is 52 and 24 as yeah. a starter. And the Los Angeles, and, and even more important than that, the Los Angeles Raiders will leave here 8 and 4, which is what they wanted. When I talked to Jay yesterday and I said, what about this game? What about the Bengals? He said, this is one of those games you want to quietly come in town. Don't get anybody upset. Get the win and get out of town before they even know you've been here. Yeah, well. McCall on the ball carrier. And speaking of that, let's take a look at the remaining schedule of the Raiders and see exactly what they have in front of them at San Diego, Buffalo at, at home, at New Orleans, and Kansas City at home. Boy, that's not easy. And especially, don't, don't kid yourself about that December 1st game, the way San Diego has been playing yes. of late. Over the last six games, you mentioned to me, they're 3-3. Three and they're three, three and three. And they also quit New Orleans last week. I mean, they really beat them physically, so... So they've got a tough road to hoe. Denver's remaining schedule is easier. New England at home, at Cleveland, Phoenix at home, at San Diego. So right now, Denver has the better of it as far as uh, the schedule is concerned. Kansas City, look at that. Three of the next, they're on the road this week, and three of the next four on the road at Seattle, San Diego home, at San Francisco, at the Raiders. And those, of course, are the three teams that are contending for the title in the West, as Vince Evans carries. Well, you'd have to say that, that that schedule favors the Broncos, but of course, one thing that's not up there, Charlie, is the fact that today, later in the afternoon, the Broncos have to play in Seattle. And anytime you have to go up and play in the Kingdom, that's not an easy game. And the standings, Denver is 8-3, and three. Raiders and Kansas City tied at 7-4. Seattle 5-6, San Diego 3-8. Right now, the Raiders, of course, will go to 8-4. Kansas City is losing. They'll go to 7-5, and like you said, uh, Seattle tough, particularly in the Kingdom, and they're coming off of a bad loss last week to the Raiders, so uh, Denver could well have their hands full. And Chuck Knox is one of those people that has his team well prepared. They don't, they don't do that two weeks in a row. Mitchell Price on the return, and he is spun under the 35-yard line. Very crude is the man who got it. Charlie, one of the interesting things about the Los Angeles Raiders is that they don't necessarily go through the draft. You remember during the 70s, <clears throat> excuse me, the Steelers and the Cowboys were the prototypes of doing things through the draft. Look at the number of free agents, plan B, and trades that the Raiders have done. Only 19 original draft picks. On the other hand, look at Cincinnati. Still somewhat from the old school. 34 draft picks. And right here, the free agents at the bottom there, five of the nine there are waiver acquisitions this year. So the Bengals have been very dependent upon the draft, but they've been a little bit lean over the last couple of years, as witnessed by a record of one and ten. And they haven't participated that much in the Plan B program. My understanding is this year they will participate a little bit more. This pass is dropped by the touchdown scoring Reggie Rimber. Well, look at, the, uh, Charlie, I was going to say, look at the number of starters that the Raiders have through Plan B. People like the, both inside backers, Thomas Benson, Ricky Ellison, Ronnie Lott, of course, is a Plan B acquisition. Roger Craig is a Plan B acquisition. You can go on and on. They have, Bob Golick was a Plan B acquisition. I mean, they've done an outstanding job of getting quality players in the Plan B, and uh, Cincinnati has been left at the gate, so to speak, because they haven't participated. Here is the draw, and Craig Taylor is the ball carrier. And the ball just shy of the 45-yard line. And they'll pick up the first down. And the clock should take its countdown to the two-minute mark. With a time left in the ballgame. As you saw next week, the Raiders will be at 
San Diego, and next week Cincinnati will host the Giants. We have two minutes left here. We'll be back in a moment. Actually, I think that was drawn on with a ballpoint pen. Yeah, you could be right. Yeah. Quick man, tank, uh, we want to thank our two spotters, Russ Jackson, Bob Saban, uh, Randy Danbury, our statistician. Gentlemen, you've done an outstanding job. We greatly appreciate it. Our head runner, Jake McDonough, who has also watched over us today. Exactly. We appreciate our producer, Tommy Roy. Wasn't that a shot of him we just saw? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Almost intercepted. Oh, Anthony Smith had that lineman's dream. And now let's take a look at today's Canon camcorder replay of the game. Well, this is as good as it gets, as it gets for special teams. Steve Ortmeyer, coach of the Los Angeles Raiders, has that great line, and Tim Brown shows that despite that knee injury of two seasons ago, he's still got that burst. This is definitely an outstanding run by number 81. 75-yard touchdown return. That is our Cannon Cam Porter replay of the game. Hollis throws. Pass is complete. Shane Garrett pulls it in at the 40-yard line of the Raiders. Minute 40 and counting time remaining. Robinson and Jones with the tackle. Hollis has completed 15 of 27, 130 yards, and his first touchdown in the National Football League. And that one went to Reggie Rimble. And this one is incomplete. And now it's time for the employee owners of Avis to salute the game's most valuable player. And it is Don Mosbar, the winner of the We Try Harder Award. Avis, the official car rental company of the NFL. Charlie, the offensive line for the Los Angeles Raiders was dominant today, and no one more so than Don Mosbar in the middle of the line. You know, you, Ronnie Lott had two interceptions. Roger Craig had a pretty good game. Marcus Allen did some things. But offensively, that man right there, the center of the line, did an outstanding job. We didn't hear much from Grant or Crumry or any of the defensive linemen for that matter. I think Don Mosbar well deserved that award today. On their offensive drives, it was the run, and he was the key to that. And Mike Dingo inside the 20-yard line as he move on the one-minute mark time remaining. And we want to take a quick opportunity to thank our executive producer at NBC Sports, Terry O'Neill, the coordinating foot producer for NFL football is John Francis. Tommy Roy was today's producer, and John McDonough, our director, Jeffrey Simon, our AD, our production associate, Harold Bryant, production manager, Ralph McFarlane, our tech manager, Art Parker. And we will all gather again next Sunday in Mile High Stadium in Denver. We look forward to that. That's right. First place team in the AFC West, but that man right there has the rest of his group on a mission. That's two straight weeks now that they have been very dominant, but they're going to have to peak. Because as we mentioned the fact earlier, Charlie, this remaining schedule, boy, it's a tough road to hoe for the Raiders. And also when we were talking with Art Show yesterday, he, was having, he, he pointed out to his team, he said, we, we would win two this season, then we'd lose one. Then we win two, and we lose one. We never won three in a row. We get complacent. He said, we won the last two. I wanted them not to have the letdown here. They haven't. They now have three in a row. That's exactly right. From the get-go, after Ronnie Lott's interception, when they drove right down and scored, it was evident the Raiders came to play. Oh, I love that. I love that cliche. My mom really likes that. Came to play. Yes. yes. No, they came for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's television talk. We come for lunch. They come to play. <laughs> that's right. Don't forget, this is a doubleheader Sunday here on uh, NBC. And stay with us. Miami-Chicago game or Denver-Seattle or San Diego at the Jets. All on NBC and coming up next. So don't bother with your local listings. Uh, you just kind of hang around for a few minutes after we wrap it up here. Then you'll know which game that you are going to go. And the snow is falling one more time here at Riverfront Stadium. This telecast is produced by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast that the express written consent of the Cincinnati Bengals and the National Football League is prohibited. This game is the property of the National Football League, Los Angeles Raiders, and Cincinnati Bengals, all rights reserved. Ronnie Lott, 
in the snow with two key interceptions. Another quick look at the ticker. Cleveland big over Kansas City in the fourth. Dallas is now a seven-point margin in the fourth over Washington. New England is in front of Buffalo in the fourth. What a day this has been. Pittsburgh in front of Houston. That's in the fourth. Giants and Tampa Bay are tied in the fourth. You got to be kidding. <laughs> this is really... Detroit in front of Minnesota. Indianapolis is creeping up on Green Bay. We should mention for, for a very good reason there, Detroit, our... our uh... I don't want to say condolences exactly because maybe that's not the right word, but I'm happy for Detroit and I'm sure they dedicated the game to Utley for what has happened with him and our, our gee, you know what, words words fail me, which is really rare. And I, I wish hearts, that you could our hearts, our thoughts, and our prayers. Yeah, yeah, I, I I'm, yep. that's tough. Where did the snow come from? It looks like Christmas is here. Lee Bills. Oh, oh no. please, <laughs> please, please. No, Don, no Don Meredith. Well, the weather outside no, is frightful, but the fire inside is delightful. Well, everybody that was watching now is turned That's off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a storm just came in. You know what it looks like, Charlie? You know what it looks like? It looks like if we had a little glass top right here, it would be one of those little things that you shake. You're right. Yeah. It looks right. like that, doesn't it? Now the Raiders call the Raiders time. Take a time out. <laughs> boy, oh boy. You know what? I hope this kid gets it in. It'll be good for him if he can get this touchdown here. Remember earlier we had a report from Bob Costas on uh, Hussettler, the quarterback of the Giants, the lower vertebrae. No neurological damage. He has a broken bone in his back. The bad news is a broken bone in his back. The good news is no neurological damage. Good. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for getting that information before we got off the air. We appreciate that. Where is this snow coming from? Isn't this wild? <laughs> and they're playing <laughs> and they're playing surf in USA. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> well, they're playing that for the Raiders. <laughs> yeah. All right, come on, run, run. Give him some water, babe. You're right. Look at that pace of run, run. Yeah. There's no... He's walk, walk, He's down a walk, walk, jump. He's walk, walk. The water boy of the Raiders. All right, what do we have? 22 there seconds left. There's Walk Walk. 22 seconds left. The ball at the 10-yard line. Good-looking guy. Third down. Ball pops loose. After the hit, and it is recovered by Bob Golan. Anthony Smith, the former, the last year's first round pick, who ended up missing the season because of a knee injury, is the man that got in there and got his eight and a half, eight and a half sack? Yeah. How do you say that? Well, that's 8.5 sacks yeah. for Anthony Smith. There's the rip move right there. Strips him of the ball, and there's Bob Golick at the right place at the right time to conclude this game here. As you say, you know, if this snow would have been earlier, this would have been an interesting look. Yeah. We would have needed to have the uh, the guy from New England with the snow plow. That's right. Remember he that game? Come out. Yeah. But the hit, the fumble, and the recovery seems to be a, uh, a perfect way to end this game. Five turnovers by the Bengals. They lead the AFC in giveaways. That makes 36 this season. That's tough when you're going to average three a game. They had a quick review of the <laughs> play stand as Carl on the field in the snow. That's great. Uh -huh. And now Vince Evans will just down the ball. And that is it. They'll just take the official countdown. And the Raiders' record is now 8 and 4. The Bengals' record now 1 and 11. The final here Raiders 38 and the Bengals 14. For Todd Christensen, I'm Charlie Jones.